All dreams considered. All dreams considered. All dreams considered. Welcome to All Dreams Considered with Sarah, and today I am talking with my friend Diana, who I will probably be talking to a lot in this podcast. Whether you hear her speaking most of the time or not it remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, so this is my friend Diana. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping me with this today. <laughs> I'm glad to do it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I tried a couple times and I realized that, yeah, in person is probably best. But what I want to do with this podcast is talk about all the different ways that dreaming affects our daily lives. And I call it interactive dreaming. It's, I see myself as an interactive dreaming mentor. And that means that I like to help people with probably, I mean, if it deals with dreaming and imagination and plumbing the subconscious, that's what I'm really interested in looking at. And that has many implications that may or may not be obvious at first glance. But when I talk about interactive dreaming included within those, and free, feel free to like interrupt at any point if there's something that you don't understand, but I'm just going to read through my list really quick and maybe touch on each one of them. So um, the most obvious one is sleeping dreams. Every night, every human, or well, whenever we sleep and if we get, you know, a certain number of hours, um, then humans and animals, um, it has been proven, we all sleep every night for sure during REM. There's something also called the hypnagogic state or the hypnopompic state, which are the states before sleep, um, when you're like awake and you're falling asleep or you're um, sleeping and then you wake up. Those two states where I also have noticed that there's a lot of imagery that comes through at that time. And I consider those dreams as well, but I classify them differently in my dream journal when I record things that are there. Yes. So um, so you said we sleep during REM. Did you mean that we dream during <laughs> yes. REM? Okay. Yes, sorry. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank I thought you. so, but I just... Yes. Okay. Um, I haven't done this before, so... <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> thank you. I think you're doing great. And thank you so much for letting me do this with you here in your house. It's really, this view fabulous. So excited for you. But um, yeah, so when we sleep, we dream. And falling asleep, we might have dreams. Waking up, we might have dreams. In fact, Thomas Edison used to sleep, I think it was Edison, used to sleep with a key in his hand. And he would tilt himself back in his chair because he knew that that was um, just on the edge of sleep is where he would catch the best ideas. I'm not sure if it was Edison, but um, he would hold this key in his hand. Oh, good idea. She's got out the computer. And um, hold the key in his hand, and as he would fall asleep, then the, the, key, would relax, uh, the key would fall from his gri grip as his hand relaxed, and it would clang on the floor, and that would startle him awake. And he would write down or he'd remember whatever it was that he'd just been dreaming. That's where some of the many ideas have come to various people through that. So that was actually nap dreaming. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then, did you have something to add? No, I just think that's fascinating. And, um, he would take that extra step to try to remember. Yeah. It's, um, for an inventor, it seems, I mean, it's incredibly inventive for an inventor to have invented that. <laughs> <laughs> invented that process. But then there's also, after that, there's daydreaming. And I know during school or whenever I was in a meeting, um, I, I, I was a good student. And I was also, I think, a good employee when I was doing that. But sometimes I was, my, my mind was elsewhere because whatever the topic was wasn't immediately gripping or seemed like a waste of my time or whatever. So my mind would wander off and I would have some fantasy or I'd think about, huh, actually. Okay, so the thing that I usually think about when I'm daydreaming is how I would solve some problem. Like I have spent so much time in my mind trying to invent a, most recently I've been trying to invent a twice a day cigarette dispenser for my friend using recycled materials because I'm I'm often thinking about creative recycling and um, she wants to cut back on smoking but she doesn't exactly want to quit 
And so I was thinking, well, if I gave you something that gave you like a 15 minute window every day where you could take the cigarette if you were there or not, but then you would know, okay, well, you know, maybe at 7.30 every day, you know, it would, here's your cigarette for the day, for the next 12 hours or not. And it goes back into the queue, you know, and it has, but so many things about it, you know, I'm like, okay, how do I keep them fresh? You know, what's the um, loading process going to be like? And I, I, I do not kid you, I have fantasized about this or daydreamed about it ah easily more than 24 hours over the last year okay not actually probably even more than that <laughs> but I'm often trying to solve things like that how could I creatively um, solve this problem for my friend I was just thinking that <laughs> that's amazing that you're actually trying to solve problems with your daydreams where most of the time I'm just trying to escape um, the daily whatever whatever's going on or um, so my daydreams are probably more romantic in nature Ooh. <laughs> yeah um, do you want to share any of them or no oh, okay. of course not um, but I want to go back and say that according to Scientific American Edison would hold a ball in each hand and um, presuming, as the article says, that as he fell asleep, the orbs would fall to the floor and wake him. This way he could remember the sorts of thoughts that come to us as we are nodding off, which we often do not recall. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway. Thank you for looking that up. I wonder why I thought it was a key. I guess actually in a different reality it must be a key that he was using. That works for me. <laughs> either, either It seems like the key would make more noise than a ball might, unless yeah. it's a bowling ball in each hand, but that's... It's hard to hold on to. <laughs> hard to hold on to, right? Or maybe croquet balls, because those croquet, are really heavy. Right? That right? would make quite the clack. clack. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And if they fell on your toe, wow. Right? You don't want that, actually, because I think that would distract too much. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, a rubber ball would just probably... <laughs> well, if there's a dog involved. In the... <laughs> well, right? <laughs> when you have to have his trained dogs to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd make it more complicated. I think a key would be the most easy. But anyway. <laughs> I don't know that anybody that is alive today was there at the time. Well, maybe. I don't know. There, we're discovering more things about the world every day, so it's possible. But yeah, so yeah, there's many different types of day types of daydreaming. Yeah, there's problem solving, there's romantic fantasy. Sometimes I think, oh gosh, what was it like when I was, um, you know, at the lake, you know? Or I'll hear a sound and it reminds me of some place that I've been, and I'll think back, you know, I'll right? Time travel back in my own mind, right? I I'll do that too. Still escaping. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But I love that you're you're solving problems that's, that's that's pretty cool maybe my daydreams should be a little more productive <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know about should <laughs> I think that's just what my mind finds most interesting is here's a cool problem you know and I want to like uh, I, I go to Home Depot and I just wander around you know I mean there's some stuff that's already built but most of the time I'm like how can I repurpose that you know what you know, what can I get, what ideas can I get? And I, I very rarely have been acting upon them, but it's one of my, I, so in my nightly dreams, I was actually having this conversation with Elon Musk just a few weeks ago. I think I told you about that. You might have. Yeah. Where, um, I don't know why I was confessing this to him, but he and I were walking around one of his companies. I think I was interviewing, I'm not sure, in my dream, and I was confessing that yeah sometimes I just go to Home Depot and wander around and I don't actually do anything with the ideas that I get because I don't currently have a workspace right you know I live in a small space and um, it is one of my dreams you know to have actually a maker's space where not only I but a lot of other people could come together and work on things and share the tools you know and um, have you know share also inspiration because there's um, a lot that happens with collaboration mm -hmm. in those types of situations. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> but another fun thing 
or another type of interactive dreaming that I love to talk about is the play of synchronicity in our lives or the various coincidences that are not coincidences. So um, have you had any synchronicities? When I say synchronicity, do you know what I mean? Or... Oh, sure. Am I going to come up with any examples off the top of my head? Maybe not right this second, but I, I see it play out in my life frequently. Yeah. So basically synchronicity, for those that are listening, is when we may have something on our mind and then synchronistically something comes into our field that confirms what's on our mind. Or um, here's a synchronicity. We were, and I'm not going to out you on this, but we were walking um, in a place and we were looking at names of boats. And you were telling me a story about your your past. And as we were walking by these boats, I was seeing how the names of the boats actively... Uh, reflected the story and who I see you as. It was one of those interesting things. I don't know if you'd allow me to say some of those. Go for it. Well, um, I see you, I remember, because we've known each other for so long, and I just remember watching you dance. And the way that you move, I I described it to you one way that I don't think I'm going to repeat on this. (laughs) (laughs) But it was incredibly seductive. Um, and I don't think that you were trying to be seductive. I think that you just have this way of moving that it's liquid, it's fluid, it's, it's mesmerizing. The way I see you dance, fantastic. Um, but the, there were two, two of these boats were named something dancer or just dancer. And, oh, one of them was shadow dancer. And I was, you know, as we were talking, I'm I was thinking, oh yeah, you, You've become a shadow dancer. You know, you only dance in the shadows. Mm-hmm. This is true. Yeah. It's definitely true. Haven't stepped out and shown that side of myself in a long time. I think it's okay to just dance in the shadows, though. Right. Right. Because it can just be a gift that you enjoy for yourself. I mean, maybe the gift is just for you. Right. It's certainly is a source of energy Mm. that I I think would be good for me to tap into again. So, um, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that, but... (laughs) Well, we're just talking about synchronicity. Right, synchronicity. And coincidences. Um, do you think... Do you think that we're hardwired to look for patterns? Do you think... Um, is that part of being human, or is there... Is there room for both? I'm, I don't know if I'm asking clearly what I want to ask, but are we looking for patterns or are there indeed patterns? Or is it both? I think that um, from various perspectives, all of those are probably accurate answers. But what I personally believe is that the universe is built upon sacred geometry principles. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And inherently, there are patterns everywhere in the universe because of that. You know, we see that with the Fibonacci sequence. We see that with uh, the golden ratio, the golden mean um, plants. How many plants or pine cones? You know, we see these patterns replicated throughout all of um, nature, all around us. And so I think perhaps we are hardwired, as you say, to find them simply because that's how the universe is built. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I could see somebody saying that, I mean, I could see arguments against that, but, um, and I'd be willing to entertain other options. (laughs) But right now I think, yeah, I think we are probably hardwired to see patterns, but I also think that's because the patterns are natively there. Now, are we seeing the patterns that we want to see versus the patterns that are objectively there, I would actually say yes to both of those as well. Mm -hmm. That, um, yeah, if you want to see something, it's, we can make anything. We're, we are all creative beings. We are all creators. We can easily turn anything into a pattern. I mean, I know that I can, I can weave anything into any type of pattern I like. Right. Um, even if it's, you know, a stretch. I don't mind stretching. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. 
That, that that brings up a thought, but it's a whole different tangent. So, uh, you know, I uh, love tangents. <laughs> well, I've just been thinking about spin. I mean, I was an English major in college, and you you you'd, you'd read a book and and you'd make an argument Even when you wrote a paper. Uh, you could make any argument. I could take the same notion as the person next to me and and come up with a completely different version of what the truth is and be able to um, back it up with text and and they could say the opposite of me and back it up with text yeah um, but with math math is uh, I think the word I want is finite it there are certain answers to certain questions it's always going to be that answer unless you're really creative with math, I guess, or really bad at it. Um, but um, even that's a pattern. So right. I don't know what that means. but So I think what you're saying is 2 plus 2 is 4, but 2 plus 2 is 5 with large values of 2. So if, you know, if I was had 2.8 plus 2.8 and I was right. rounding, then that would basically be 5. I mean, you can fudge things. There's always fuzzy math. <laughs> is there though? Well, we can make everything fuzzy. Well, Just right. put a I certainly on. can as an English major, <laughs> <laughs> or a lobbyist, or a you know. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's a tangent. That seems to be the world I feel like we live in right now. Well, a lot of people are saying a lot of things, and trying to distract people from the things that really matter. Right. I agree with that. Especially in politics, big business. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm not probably taking you away that. from dreams. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, I believe that that's part of the collective dream, though. You oh. know, you're tapping into that. Right. That there's so much going on in this collective dream, and... Um, there's a lot of people doing fuzzy math and fuzzy logic. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. With an agenda. With an agenda. Um, some, of peop some people want to deceive. Some people are just um, basing their information upon fallacies that they may or may not have, um, well, that may have been intentionally seeded for them. Um, I, you know, we all have many reasons for the things that we do um, and I think that it all actually works for the good of humanity though even the people that are trying to deceive us I don't think that they would acknowledge this but I do believe that even the people that are trying to deceive us their higher selves are guiding them in the way that needs to um, lead us down a certain path Mm -hmm. And because I think the number of times I have actually seen things, even in my own life, flip on a dime. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I was I I was working. And I had this career, and I I was at my wit's end, about ready to quit. I didn't know what to do, and um, <laughs> everything shifted within a week. Suddenly, I had a new manager. Suddenly, you know, all these things changed. Um, which made it different. I mean, I probably should still have quit, but um, I've seen things. Uh, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. And even if you think you know what's going to happen tomorrow, there's always chance. There's always an opportunity for somebody to come from left field. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we used to have deadlines, you know, of, okay, we're going to get this product shipped by this date. And yeah, we're all working towards it. And then suddenly there's some world event that happens. And wouldn't you know it, suddenly our deadline doesn't seem as important anymore. Right. And But that was outside of our control. There's so many things that are outside of our control. We plan for things. Um, and sometimes we forget to mention that there are all these assumptions that we're making that this will happen if this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. And we ignore that, okay, well, if there is a power outage for three days, 
then um, yeah, none of that's going to happen because none of us can. Our, I mean, our batteries on our computer, our laptops are only going to last for a few hours. <laughs> right. Right. It's like the other day I was going to, I had to write and I decided I needed a break. I was going to go for a walk and I locked myself out of my house. <laughs> so that wasn't really in the plan, <laughs> but that ended up having a really entertaining afternoon. <laughs> I still had stuff to do, but it got done. But I, yeah, life had its own ideas about how my day was going to be spent, so. Yes. That is a great, that is a great example. So, um, well, we were talking about synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got into the collective dream and we went off on a tangent. So tangents, just so you know, on my podcast, totally welcomed. Because if it's a topic that needs to be discussed further, we can always come back to it in another episode. Right. Okay. So don't worry about that. I mean, today I do have my plan of at least mentioning. I want to hear more. Yeah, well. (laughs) Okay, well, um, lucid dreaming. We talked about that today already Mm -hmm. as well. So lucid dreaming is when you're aware that you are dreaming. And, well, it's more than that because... There are, I've had dreams where I am conscious that I am dreaming and I just watch the dream happen. And I actually call that conscious dreaming where I'm basically aware of who I am in this waking consensus world. Um, But I'm not exactly lucid. Wait, I just contradicted myself. So conscious dreaming where I'm aware of who I am and I'm dreaming, but I'm not aware um, that I'm dreaming. Well... But then there's, I am exactly aware that I am dreaming because I've done a reality test. And, you know, I, we talked today about um, one way to do that is to close your nose and to try and breathe. Sometimes that will help you identify if you're, uh, if you're dreaming or not. Works a lot for me. There's other factors, though, that we can do to actually see, to do a reality test. And I like to incorporate these into my daily life, which is why we're talking about it, because I did a reality check earlier. I'm like, oh, am I dreaming? Yep, I'm awake. I mean, well, I'm in the collective dream, right? Right. <laughs> I'm not in my own world dreaming. Um, or maybe I am in my own world dreaming, but, you know, because um, reality checks can fail. But anyway, I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> That's a whole That's a whole series. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the conscious dream, you know, because sometimes in my dreams, I'm someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've been, uh, I know I've been a Korean man. I know that in dreams I can read Chinese. Um, I remember I was, um, I think I was recycling. Actually, I was shredding all sorts of Chinese documents. Sometimes my phone in my dreams will have, I, I've looked at my phone in my dreams before and, oh my gosh, it's got all these Chinese ter- characters on it. Did I get hacked? You know, um, that was where I was, pro- I, I'm not sure what, if that was me as me or me as someone else and then remembering that I was me. Because I also, something that I wanted to talk about later was the multiple layers of dreaming where, you know, you can have um, dreams at several different places in my mind. And sometimes that's why some of my dreams are so convoluted because there's actually multiple tracks of dreams happening at the same time. And Mm. I do have examples of dreams where I was able to identify that, but I don't want to talk about that right now because, again, that's probably another dream series. Talk about the multiple layers of dreaming. Um, Yeah, so lucid dreaming, conscious dreaming, where we're aware of who we are. Um, There's also the conscious dreaming or lucid dreaming. I had a lucid dream the other day where I was actually my soul. And so I knew more of who I am than just this world. I was remembering all sorts of other stuff. Um, But I am me in that sense. So I think that was like a soul dream at the soul level. And some people say, well, psychologists point out that whenever we're dreaming in our dreams, everything in the dream is me. You know, um, I am everything. Mm -hmm. And in this collective dream, according to the law of one and some other, um, like, I think A Course in Miracles, there's other um, uh, philosophies that talk about how, yeah, 
even I think the Buddha might have talked about it, that we are all one. You know, so we are all the soul. We all share consciousness, but through a different, <laughs> through Sorry. a different lens. My head just exploded. Don't mind me. Oh, would you like me to help you pick up some of those pieces? No, <laughs> not at this time. Okay. Just, it was more of a rush of emotion and understanding it in a moment. Wow. So, and I don't know if I could articulate it unfortunately. That's okay. That'll probably come up on the podcast more often, talking about these different spiritual concepts that are coming out. Um, but yeah, so in my dreams, the first thing I look to is, okay, what part of me is this? You know, why am I taking on the role of I'm a Chinese man? Or why am I taking on the role of, you know, being this other person? I was Meghan Markle in a dream once. Hmm. I, that was a great dream, actually. Hmm. We, Meghan Markle and I... No, wait. I was Meghan Markle, and I was with Kate Middleton. Mm -hmm. And we were walking through this snowbank. We were dressed amazingly well, too. We looked mm -hmm. fine. But anyway, we got into the... <laughs> we got into, I think, Windsor Palace after we walked through this snowbank. And the snow was just falling off of us on these really ornate carpets. And I was just like, oh, gosh, is this okay? Because we're making a mess of the queen's house. <laughs> right. That was a good dream. <laughs> but, you know, what part of me is Meghan Markle? Mm -hmm. You know, that's interesting. Uh, anyway, I'm oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> no, my, I'm, I'm still kind of mind blown over here. So, yeah. I think I was wearing... One of us was wearing pink, the other was wearing blue. Anyway, um, that's in my dream journal. Not all of my dreams are in my dream journal. A lot of the dreams I refer to are, though. So that's, that's one of them I can actually point to and say, look, I, there it is. Um, another type of dreaming that will, probably, um, that will be discussed um, on this podcast is shamanic journeying, which is more of a conscious meditation type. It's some, some people can think of it as more like a guided meditation, depending upon um, which school of the shaman, which I just distracted myself because the whole thing with shamanic journeying is, you know, it's more like nature medicine. Shaman are incredibly unique and they all have their own perspective and ways of doing things. So, but shamanic dreaming, sh shamanic journeying is a way of using, I like to think, active imagination combined with like rhythmic drumming um, in order to go explore other realms or higher realms um, and get information from different beings and whatnot about certain situations. But it's kind of like guided meditation. Hmm. Um, guided meditation, though, is usually less... Um, improv -y, shall we say, because the guided meditation, usually whoever's guiding the meditation has a plan of, okay, we're going to start here, and you're going to start by this fountain, and you're going to notice that this person is there, and they may give you um, permission to say, okay, maybe it's your grandma, or maybe it's your, your guardian angel, um, but, you know, and then they'll, they'll guide you through a s set of experiences in that, in that meditation, but a lot of times the shamanic journeys that I've gone on, somebody will say, okay, here's the um, outline of what's going to happen. Come back and tell your story. And then they start drumming. And then who knows what's going to happen because I'm in my imagination and I start following what they told me to do. And then it goes off into left field. And before you know it, I'm like, oh, right. I was supposed to talk to Obi-Wan Kenobi about something or, you know, I don't know. You know, I just make it up. <laughs> um, but and now they're calling me back, you know, because the drumming changes and you're like, oh yeah, I got to come back to my body and bring this information. But shamanic journeying is a fun, fun, fun thing to do as well. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of what we do in my dream teacher classes. Okay. Yeah. With Robert Moss. Okay. Yeah. I get to do that again this summer. I'm very excited. That's awesome. That's actually what came to mind when you were talking about that. I wondered if if that was one of the things you did. Yeah. I'm, I'm, because I, I, I guess I'm a random person. I am reminded of ayahuasca. Oh, yes. And so I, I wonder if there's any relation. 
So, so that. So Robert doesn't do any of that. Right. Um, his um, his dreaming is is all about using conscious imagination or active imagination. Um, and nightly dreams, um, mm, okay. primarily. Well, and synchronicity is in danger. I mean, he does a lot of this stuff, but um, he doesn't do any of the psychedelic enhanced moments. Um, that is another um, area, though. And what's really exciting is that Oregon has passed, you know, uh, is actively looking into psilocybin as a, a tool for combating depression, especially. Mm, mm-hmm. And what's um, there's it's such an exciting um, time for that because it can really help people. It can be a one and done type. Um, it doesn't have to be. It's not for everybody. But um, you know, it's, anyway, we could. I I will be talking about um, the different psychedelic enhancing okay. enhanced dreams as well. Um, yeah, um, because what's interesting is. In the past, we've kind of shied away from it, but you're right. Shamanic journeying has been about using mushrooms, using different plants, you know, different guides to to consciously detach from our bodies, but go get information and bring it back, hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be talking about that as well. And, yeah, ayahuasca. I think there's also peyote. There's... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know I have people that I can reach out to that can talk on all of these topics. Right. So it's very exciting. Um, something else that I have here um, is I have psych, psych, and psych. So there's psychedelic, but then there's also psychic, and there's also psychotic. Mm-hmm. So psychic events or psychic moments, you know, where suddenly I know something or I see something or, you know, um, we connect and I telepathically pull something out of your head or... Um, uh, I mean, there's many ways of seeing psych- psychic events or intuitive events. Um, and I see those also as dreaming because it happens in my imagination. I mean, it happens there, but you can't deny that it's true. Well, you can, actually, you can deny anything. Um, but experience tells me that all of this is true. And even psychotic events... I don't know that a lot of the people that present as psychotic are as ill as we think they are. I think a lot of times, and and given the people that I've seen that are undergoing um, psychotic events, uh, it's just that they're tapped into another level of reality, and so they're reacting to things that are not in this reality, but that doesn't mean that they're not real. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, you can call that a different kind of dreaming where their their ability to distinguish between this realm and the other realm, the dreaming realms, is um, kind of wonky. And, yeah. Um, but just because somebody had a, a an event that was, quotey fingers, all in your mind, isn't everything all in your mind? Like Dumbledore said. Right. You know, Dumbledore said it, I think it was in Deathly Hallows. <laughs> course it's in your mind doesn't make it not real or right. something like that i buy into that absolutely yeah. something else that i'd like i plan to talk about is deja vu or deja mm-hmm. reve mm-hmm. so deja vu is i've already seen this and mm-hmm. deja reve is i've already dreamt this i get deja reve a lot like where I dreamt this. And for me, when I get Deja Reve now, it's um, confirmation that I'm on the right path. And usually, um, with my Deja Reve, it's like, but that was different. So the fact that that's different is interesting to me. And um, gives me, it reassures me that my soul wants me to have a unique experience that Um, I can't just say, oh, I know this stuff is going to happen because my soul's like, oh, no, we want to enjoy this ride. Right. Right. (laughs) I don't have anything else to say. Just, yes. Again, locking myself out of the house. uh, (laughs) That was unexpected. And it brought deputies to my house. So um, I'm climbing through my window. You know, that was different. It was entertaining. So, 
Yeah. But it felt like you'd done it before. No, I guess I, I went off again on my, I'm going to have to edit <laughs> Sarah because I am random. Uh, you are delightful. Uh, I don't know, something you said made me think of that again. So, oh, just about wanting you to enjoy your path and enjoy your journey. Uh, you know, you get the deja vu or the deja reve to remind you you're on the path. Mm -hmm. um, but they also throw some stuff in that's different. Yeah. <laughs> to to keep it interesting. Mm -hmm. Or at least that was my response to what you were saying. And so then I was reminded again of because it just happened the other day. And, and I was so kind of tickled by it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which I shouldn't, I probably should have been annoyed. Or again, got to get rid of the shoulds. But <laughs> um, it was entertaining. So oh, it, sound, it sounded like a great story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what happened there was actually free association, um, which I think is another type of interactive dreaming. Hmm. You know, I said something and your mind is connecting dots with other things that right. we've been talking about. Right. Again, don't have anything to say. I'm just <laughs> responding. But I see all of this as a way of befriending our subconscious. You know, my subconscious, I um, was thinking a lot about this this past year because I was having a hard time getting my place clean. It's really cluttered for some reason. Well, actually, that's not true. I keep making progress. And what's funny is I live in a small space, and I know it'll take me maybe a day, and everything will be fine. And yet, there's something in my something that stops me from doing it. And so um, that was one of the reasons I really started diving into trying to lucid dream for a while, because I wanted to talk to my subconscious and find out what is going on, what is happening here. And actually, I, I, this is a tangent, but tangents are allowed. I got lucid in a dream right after I decided, oh, I need help. I need to talk to my subconscious about what's going on with this situation. And I was only lucid for maybe, I don't know, just a few seconds. And I'm like, oh, I'm lucid. And then I started calling out in my dream. I looked up to the sky and I'm like, help, subconscious, help. <laughs> <laughs> And the very next day, I was talking with a friend. I don't know if I told you this story, but I was talking with my friend, and he's like, well, what did you want help about? And I said, well, you know, this. And then I was also talking about how I have all these projects. I have so many projects going on. I mean, my office is cluttered with half-done projects. And, you know, I don't, I don't really want to confess all of that right now. But, um, and when I explained the you know, why I was trying to reach my subconscious. He's like, oh, what you need is this book. And he recommended The Marriage of Spirit. And I forget who's, who it's by. But it, <laughs> um, it did. It was exactly what I needed. And so my subconscious, um, I mean, I wouldn't have asked him that question if I hadn't called out to my subconscious and it hadn't been on my mind. And so what, did my subconscious send him? I mean, you know, how did that work? I don't need to necessarily know how it worked. I just need to know that I was able to ask my subconscious for help and help came the very next day. Well, the very next week because it took a while for the book to get there. But um, The Marriage of Spirit, Enlightened Living in Today's World by Leslie Temple Thurston. Thank you. You're welcome. I knew it was Temple something, but I was going to say Templeton or something, which would have been wrong. Also in dreaming, um, there's the inside versus outsider views. Sometimes I'm inside my body. Sometimes I feel like I'm the background observing my body in a situation. Sometimes I'm the background observing multiple versions of me. And sometimes I'm a version of me observing other versions of me. Um, that happened in a dream Actually, it happens in several dreams where I'm 
various maybe ages or different slightly different I don't know aspects or uh, it's like I have many many sides expressing or something and so we'll be looking into that have you had dreams like that oh sure <laughs> Lots of times. Yeah. 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 And then I was talking about the multiple layers of dreaming again. And then I was going to talk about various types of sleeping dreams. We've already touched on uh, lucid dreaming and, you know, the different insider, outsider views. But then there's also things like astral projection, out-of-body experiences, um, something called mundane dreaming. <laughs> There's, um, there's a whole series that I'm not quite sure what to call, but I get movies. Mm -hmm. You get those? Mm -hmm. Do you get marquees and credits in yours too? No, I don't think so. I have written down credits. I have written down marquees. I have. Wow. I know. <laughs> the Tom Hanks Vol Show is one of my one of my first ones that I wrote down that was like that, and it was an old timey marquee you know it had mm -hmm. this an ornate border it was like a white border with the tom hanks bowl show in white and i think it was like brown or it was old timey type um it was very ornate lettering but it, it was kind of like a sepia type mm -hmm. um view and i think there was also really happy old timey music playing mm. I, I I didn't even I mean I think I had heard of a vol at one point but I had never seen it written I don't think V O L E yeah it's it's a little creature it's, right yeah <laughs> so did he play a vol or no I from that dream I only got the credits oh, okay I didn't, whatever the movie was I didn't recall oh okay so okay I think I understand now yeah or actually actually I think what happened was. It was in, in my mind, the TV screen in my mind had just flipped over to the Tom Hanks Wool Show when I woke up. So I woke up before the dream, before the movie started. Hmm. Hmm. I've had all kinds of dreams, so. Oh, tell me some about, tell me about those. Oh, you want to hear my dreams? It, well, this is an overview podcast, so okay. if you want to. I had a dream as a child uh, that two boys walked up to a well and one of them turned into a large bird um, and um, started going after the other boy and I woke up immediately and I was so young I crawled out of my crib um, wow. and I had another dream which I'm sure you could read into where it was a dark room and there were a bunch of women sitting around a pool, sitting on the edge of a pool, a round pool, and there was light coming up from the pool. And beside each woman was a baby, or a little, very young, very young child. And one by one, the women one would get up and dive into the pool. And there was a man standing on top of a city, and he would cut their feet off. And I don't know. That that was my dream. So wow, that sounds terrifying for a child. Yeah, I was quite young when I had that. Um, I've had lucid dreams. Um, I don't write them down like you do, so I don't always retain them. But uh, I've even wondered if I've had experienced, been on the receiving end of astral projection. Yeah. Um, but I, I've always found dreams to be fascinating, so I, I enjoy talking about them. Oh, good. So thank you for including me in this. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me in this journey. Um, I've actually, the reason, one of the reasons that I especially wanted you to do this is because I've had dreams of me doing this with you. Oh, wow. Literally. <laughs> Is this a dream? <laughs> well, that's why I keep today. You'll notice I right. keep I'm like, am I dreaming? Because I deja vu, like, right. is really intense. Hmm. I know I'm. I know that this is 
the first time in this reality. I'm pretty sure that we've done this in many dreams. Hmm. And, um, yeah. Those dreams that you mentioned, another time we could actually do this thing called the lightning dream work process. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be doing a couple um, shows probably on that or podcasts on that one. Um, it's a, a tool that Robert taught me for how to help people work with their dreams because the dreamer is the ultimate one who knows what the dream means. You know, our, each one of our subconscious has its own symbolic language that it likes to use with us. And, you know, just because a dream dictionary may say, oh, to dream of, you know, a bird and a well means this. Um, first of all, you are a baby. I don't know that you even knew what a dream, uh, a well was. <laughs> I don't know that I did. But um, I was under three. I can guarantee you I was well, you younger than three. Yeah. Huh. So. But, um, uh, but there's symbology there that um, we could work with that you know. And I might, you know, when I think of a well, I probably think of completely different things. But by bringing up what I think, if I were you and I had that dream, what that would mean for me, you know, I get to experience your dream, first of all, which is a great gift. But also, your subconscious will be thinking, hmm, that resonates, that definitely doesn't resonate. Or, oh my gosh, no, are you kidding? That you're so far off guard. That's not at all, or not off guard, off topic or whatever. Um, you're just so far off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is yeah right. and yeah no this is what it means sometimes um the number of times when i'm like talking to people like oh well if it were my dream i would think this and then they're like oh no that's not it at all it's this right I'm like you're welcome because right you wouldn't have gotten that if you hadn't talked about it or if somebody hadn't suggested that this is what it would mean to them but by phrasing things you know in this in the way that the lightning dream work process works or does the um, dream the power of the dream remains with the dreamer right well that makes sense to me I mean even just recently I had that dream about my father who had just passed away so recently and and I'd I'd been reading something frightening in my dream and and I wanted comfort and um, I went to him and it was as, as if I'd become a child a small child again and my mom was there and they were in bed and I crawled into bed with them. Mom was kind of like dismissive and and dad just took me in his arms and pulled me in and and, and I couldn't decide. I mean the dream was still kind of frightening because I didn't feel, I was supposed to feel comforted but I felt kind of imprisoned instead as if you know, the the fear from the book I'd been reading had extended to the comfort my father was providing. And it was in talking to you afterwards that you kind of helped me realize that that in seeking comfort and safety that um, which I had derived from caring for my father, um, that I was also creating a prison and and his arms which were supposed to be comforting had felt so much like a prison. And, and so I realized after we talked that I can't live like that. I can't constantly seek safety and comfort. I, I need to, to be open to life and to um, risk and um, facing fear and stepping out into it. And, because otherwise, I've just created a very small world for myself where I don't go anywhere, I don't do anything, I don't meet new people because safety is nice, but it's also, as I've said, it's a prison. Mm -hmm. So um, That's incredible information, though. That's incredible insight that you had. Well, and it came from a dream, and, and I didn't know what to do with that dream because my father, I adored my father, um, 
it, it was disconcerting to have a dream about someone I love so much and to be feel frightened by him. I was not, it was not a feeling I wanted to wake up with, but I think there was a, a message in there, whether it was from my own subconscious, whether it was from my father, um, or both, I don't know, but um, I'm grateful for your wisdom on that, on that point, you, you help, you, like you said, the message the answers are inside of me, but you were able to kind of guide me to that place without telling me what it meant. So, right. Anyway. Yeah. I love working with dreams. I mean, <laughs> as you know, I can't go more than a few minutes without talking about it. Right. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, I've been that way for a long time. And I think that I, I feel like doing this is literally following my dreams to where I, you know, my soul wants me to go. Mm -hmm. So that's it in a nutshell. There's more kinds of dreaming that I probably didn't just write down and or didn't allude to today. Um, I didn't mean to make an exhaustive list, may, merely <laughs> to express that there's so many different things that happen in our daily lives that are really about imagination or dreaming. Oh, and also imagination. I see imagination as, I mean, it's the same, it's the same as dreaming to me because I magic in. Hmm. Um, that's how I see it. Um, when I was a little kid, I used to like, you know, in my imagination as a little kid, I could do anything, you know, I could fly if I wanted to in my dream or in my daydreams. But then, you know, and I'd even talk to people about my dreams like I do today, but I'm a lot more reserved in how I talk about my dreams today because when I was little, I used to get teased incessantly. I remember my brother told me, you have a very vivid imagination, which is today, I'm like, well, thank you. But when <laughs> I was a kid, it was like, oh my God, I am horrible. You know, I mean, I took the way he said it or, you know, the way I took it was, um, I was weird. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I'm okay being weird today, but as a little kid, you don't want to be weird. Right. So true. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. My father liked to tell me I was weird, and I'd just smile and say, that's about the nicest thing you could say to me. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, and thank you for helping me with this first episode. And... Um, I would love to talk to you more about the other dreams that I've had, but that'll be another episode um, of what we've talked about in in these um, episodes, believe it or not. I know I've said episode many times. I know I've repeated. I am not yet polished when it comes to this, but <laughs> you've got to start somewhere. That's right. And, yeah. So here we are at the beginning. Actually, we're kind of in the middle, but kind of at the beginning. Well, here's to dreaming. Here's to dreaming. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. And I'm Sarah, your host of All Dreams Considered, signing off for this episode. Thank you for joining us. All Dreams Considered. All Dreams Considered. All Dreams Considered.